Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Track Car on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series I'm going over home lineups, your installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So, go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So, Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what we'll be installing today, Track Car GPS Tracking System. It, uh, it has real-time GPS tracking, driver behavior monitoring, detailed and summary reports, geofencing functionality, alarms and notifications, account and device management, and email and SMS support. So that's some features of it and it's open source and you can put it on your friends and family's uh, uh, devices and be able to keep track of them and know that they're safe. So that's what will be installing. So I'm gonna start on Big Bear Scripts. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm gonna scroll down to generate track car config right here and then run.sh. So, it's going to ask the user which do a Docker tag to, uh, to use because we're going to get the config out of the Docker uh, image right here. So, um, uh, if the user doesn't provide a tag, then it's going to default to the latest tag. It's going to echo out the uh, tag that the user picked. A and then it's going to ask the user where they want to save the configuration on the host. So, it's going to default to this path right here. And then um, it's going to extract the directory part of that provided path into this variable. It's going to make sure that host directory exists. And then if the directory uh, it exists, ask the user if they want to remove it. So uh, this is if the uh, user decided to install the Docker uh, image before running the script. It's going to check if this path right here or whatever the user enters it is a directory and if it's a directory it's going to ask the user do you want to remove this directory and then yes or no and then if the user picks yes it's going to remove it and for some reason if it fails it's going to echo out fail and then it's going to if the user doesn't want to remove this then there's no reason to continue with the script down here so it's going to exit without removing the directory and then if the user uh uh, gets past all this then it's going to inform the user about the chosen path that they picked up here and it's going to say a saving a track card to xml to this host path which is up here and then it's going to run the docker run and uh it, it's going to automatically remove the container when it exits and it's going to set an entry point of cat and then it's going to get opt track car conf uh, tra trackcar.xml, and then it's going to put the contents in the host path that the user picked up here. So, that's a little bit about how the script works. So, I'm going to go back to generate trackcar config, then I'm going to copy this command right here, and then I'm going to SSH into my portainer and get this uh, running. So, I'm going to run the script now. So I'm going to go into my uh, partainer, which SSH into the server, and then I'm going to paste in the command, and then I'm going to run it by return or enter. It's going to ask you what Docker tag you'd like. I'm going to go with the default with the latest. And then it's going to ask you, would you like to change the path of the default? No, I'm going to go with that, the default. It's going to download the Docker container, And then it downloaded the image, so it downloaded it, and then it put it inside of this, so we can go ahead and copy that, and cut it out, and there we go. We have the uh, a tracker uh, track car .xml, uh, in the path now. So I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to uh, how to install a track car on Portainer, and then I'm going to go in the Docker Compose. So, 
version 3 of Docker Compose is being used. Set some services, and then the service underneath the service is called app. And then the image is coming off Docker Hub, and you know that because there's no URL before this. And um, it's getting the latest tag. Container name is going to be track car. Host name is going to be track car. The restart unless stopped. So if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails or any other reason, then it will try to restart. I'm going to set some ports. So 8080 on the host side. The, the left side here is the host. The right side is the container. So 8080 on the host. 8082 on the container. And then I'm going to do a port range. So, so 5000 to 5150 is on the host. And on the container, it's the same way. And on the host, it's 5000, 5150. And then 5000, 5150 on the container. And that's UDP. So TCP and UDP. And then now volumes right here. So data, app data, big bear track car. And then logs is on the host side. Same way here. The left is on the host. The right is on the container. And then opt track car logs read uh, uh, read write. And then data app data big bear track car track car .xml. And then the one that we generated. And then opt track car conf. And then track car .xml. And then read only. So. That's a little bit about the Docker Compose. So I'm going to go up here to copy raw file. And then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get it installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to local stacks uh, which are just docker compose so i'm going to add stack and then i'm going to give the stack a name so um i'm going to give it track car stack and then this stack will be deployed using docker compose a lot like i just said so we're going to scroll down to wet web editor right here we're going to go into here and we're going to paste in the docker compose that i explained and then once you do that, you're going to say deploy the stack down here. This could take a little bit because it's got to download the image from the re registry, get it extracted, and get it up with Docker uh, Compose. So it's up and running. So we're going to start on the stacks, and then we're going to go to track car stack right here, the one that we created. And uh, you'll see stop this stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack. You can also see a tab up here for editor. So you can edit your Docker Compose that we put in. And then you can update the stack. Now with this uh, Docker container, it's using the latest tag. So when you update the stack, you can repull image and redeploy. So that means it'll repull that image with the latest tag off of the registry. Get it updated and then push it out uh, with new Docker containers. So then you press the update. You can come down here and you can see all the containers running in this stack. And then you can see your access control. So that's a little bit about the stack options. So now when you're still in your stack, you can go uh, come down here, the containers, you're gonna click it. So you're, you're gonna see container status, so ID, name, status, the created, and start time. Um, you, you can see logs, inspect, stats, console, and attach. This is great for debugging. And you can have actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, size, edit. You can come down here to access controls and then create image. And then you can see container uh, details. So you can see the image that you're pulling. And then you can see all the ports that we have. So we did a, a port range. So it put all the ports in there and a command and then entry point, the environment variables, the labels, the restart policies. So you can change it here and then press update. You can also see the binds that we have. So data, app data, big bear, track car logs, and then track car .xml. So this is on the host and this is on the path. And then you can come down here and you can see it created a bridge network for track car stack and default. So. That's a little bit about the container options. 
So now I'm going to go over the UI. So in, in your browser, you're going to go to your portainer's IP address and then 8080 as the port. You're going to return or enter to go to it. And then you're, you're going to need to register a new account. So I'm going to register an account real quick. Okay, now you press the register button. Now you can log in. So I'm going to log in with the info that I just put in. And then, um, let's just build something wrong. Okay, now we're in. So you can see that I'm not a nice map. You can re register your first device. Um, you can uh, toggle this on and off. And then you can see reports. So route, events, trips, stops, summary, chart, replay, and then um, scheduled reports and statistics. So you can also come down here to settings and there's a lot of settings. So uh, and your preferences and then uh, devices, notification sounds, token, info, you can go down to notifications and see your notifications and then account and then location and then attributes. So you can see the devices, uh, geofencing, groups, drivers, calendars, computed attributes, and maintenance, saved commands, ser a server. So you can see server settings right here. So you can see the users, and then you can log in as the user, I guess, and then connections, and then edit. So you can edit the user, and the location, the permissions, the attributes. Um, you can go backwards, and you, you can uh, rem remove the user. You can also see if they're admin, if they're a disabled user, expiration date, and then email a name. So I'm gonna go backwards and you can see your account right here. So you can go to your account and lo log out. So there we go, or back in the settings. So that's a little about the UI. So I just went over step by step on getting track car running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So, stay tuned for more.